Chloe may call her Irene. Fortunately, she answers to both. We've got some other names for her as well. It was in 1992 when Lynn McGranger accepted a guest role on a little show called Home and Away. Maybe you've heard of it. And she's been acting up ever since. They suck Diana. Oh, good day, Pip. From the moment Lynn McGranger set foot in Summer Bay, producers knew they were onto something. Good day. Remember me? Irene, hi, I heard you were coming up. I can't find a damn hospital. I've been driving around in circles for 15 minutes. Be it the blue eyeshadow or peroxide blonde hair. Listen, sweetie, a bit of advice. A smart woman lets a bloke think he's making all the moves while really she's pulling the strings. Irene Roberts quickly became an icon. There you go, Dalf. For almost 30 years, she's been at the centre of some of Home and Away's biggest moments. Kirsty, love, things can't go on like this. For Ollie's sake, you two need to find some common ground. I've tried you to need... talk to Kane. I can't, Irene. Oh, Kirsty. Away from the bay, the star has danced, stripped, and pantoed her way into hearts around the world. I'm not saying that Ms. Woods is entirely unqualified, but look at her. Is this the face of Harvard Lower? All chapters of her life, perfect for a bestseller. Oh, we love it, and we love Lynn McGrath, who joins us. Lovely to see you, Lynn. Oh, thank you. Where did you get that footage from Perth? It's well, you will, you will do things on stage and TV. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on the book. It is thank out you. tomorrow. We're so excited for you. And we're going to get to it in a sec, but uh, we've got to talk to you about uh, Bert News. Like yes. everybody else in Australia, you would have been shocked to hear that news on Saturday night. Look, you know, we've all got to go sometime, but Bert, you just think it's going to be around for forever. Uh, I, I actually met Bert once when a, a very dear friend of mine, Linda Gibson, was sadly dying of, of uh, uh, ovarian cancer, and we had a roast, a roasting with a lot of the comedy people in Melbourne turned up, and Bert turned up. And he was just that kind of a guy. He just turned up and, and, and stood up on stage and, and, and talked off the cuff as he does so well. And uh, I know it was a, a wonderful moment for Linda and for all of her friends that had planned the roasting. And we're hearing so many of those beautiful stories yeah. of him just turning up and doing things yeah, like it's that. Just gorgeous. Lovely man. Uh, Lynn, we're so happy for you. Now a published <laughs> author. Oh, and this really gets a chance for people to know you yes. as, as opposed to Irene. Yes. And the book begins back with your childhood yes, and your teenage right. years. We've got some photos here which are contained in the book. So you tell us, what was, you, oh, okay. what was young Lynn oh, like? Look at you. That was me graduating from Teachers College. I, I was I always like, must have been very fond of my long skinny <laughs> pins. I don't know what's going on with my mouth. Um, but that was at Teachers College in Wagga Wagga in 1975 with the long blonde hair. That's oh. an old bow. Again, what's with the crimped hair? Good <laughs> Lord. That would have been obviously a birthday party, yeah, possibly gorgeous. mine. Um, now, that is my... My sister's going to die. Uh, that's my brother-in-law on uh, the right, and then my sister, Paula, myself, and, a, and an old bow, John. Lots of, old, lots of old bows oh, there, Lily. Love, yeah, oh, look, I've just left them in my wake. What can I say? <laughs> now, when you're on the couch here, we always have a laugh, and we love having you here. But uh, the book does get sort of quite deep, um, and, and lots of emotional stories, a lot of personal stories. Yes. Who knew that you would uh, have a fling with Simon behind Cynthia's back across the road? Yeah. But you, you don't strike me as that sort of person, but apparently, apparently it's what I you did. were doing. Apparently was I it did. putting those uh, sort of stories, was it daunting to put them on paper? Look, you know what? It, I just tried to... When I was approached to do the book, I was like, why? What What am I going to say? It's crazy. But then just um, talking to my co-writer, Summerland, um, she just had that wonderful quality to eke things out. And before you know it, you're telling these stories that you hadn't thought of for, for years and years. And, you know, I had such a good time in the 70s, <laughs> as we've already heard, um, <laughs> that, um, you know, my memory was like, what? Uh, but then gradually it all came out and and so uh, yeah and I wasn't a, in any way afraid to say the way it was hell's bells you get to an age dial and you know if people can't take you for who you are then they can wing it up their dingers really quite frankly and I, think a quote. Saying, I think they're saying I think they're saying is ding it up their wagons <laughs> it works it works either way flipping through the book and reading the book though it is very much your voice Lynn like as I'm yes. reading the book it is as Lynn jumps off the page 
Home and Away is what people, I guess, want to know a lot about yeah. too. So let's take October 1992. Yes. You arrive in Sydney, and this was just meant to be a guest role. Yes, that's okay. right. So tell I, us about it. I'd landed in Sydney with my then 20-month-old daughter, staying with mum and dad, who lived uh, down at San Susie. Paul was still working down in um, in Melbourne. And, uh, yeah, they just they carted me off. I left Clancy with mum for the day. Uh, mum to potty trained her in a day. I think that's in the book too. And I turned up and they're like, right, so we're going the bottle blonde hair and we're, you know, this woman has kind of, is still kind of hovering around 1979, even though it's the early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of uh, the blonde hair and, you know, the blue eyeshadow and the, the tiny little denim skirts and the, the, the fake, the faux uh, leather jerkins and all of that. And uh, yes, yeah, so I had an overwhelming makeup under and uh, <laughs> went back home and my daughter wouldn't look at me for a day because mum had gone to, to work as a brunette and came home as some sort of lady of the night. <laughs> what, does, what does Clancy think of the stories in the book? Because there's some things that she, she wouldn't have heard. Now she hasn't read it oh, yet. Okay. So Paul's reading it as we speak. I didn't want them to read it as I was going because Paul would go, oh, there they are there, Paul would go, oh why don't you say this bit or that bit or don't put that in. So I deliberately kept them at bay. He would have definitely said leave Simon and Cynthia out. Yes, yeah. yes. And we've got to say congratulations to Clancy because oh, your yes. daughter is engaged, which is just beautiful. So happy. One of the favourite quotes from the book is, I stopped being a people pleaser around the time I turned 60. Yes. Which is the wang it up your dinger line, I'm sure. <laughs> now, we've done some digging. We found this clip uh, we want to show you. It's from a decade ago. From this show, this very show. Okay. Larry had asked you if you're high maintenance. Okay. I don't think emotionally I'm high maintenance, yeah. but probably the, the older one gets when one becomes a mature woman, one needs to kind of not leave the house without mascara or a yeah. little bit of concealer. I probably am. I, I, it, it, I look really, unless I'm unwell, in which case I'll be wearing sunglasses, I wouldn't go down the shop without... Been a little so bit of a zhuzh. Um, so if you want to call that high maintenance, yeah, okay. then I guess I am. <laughs> That was 11 years ago, you're higher maintenance now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the hair. It's just, I love the journey of my hair over the years. Uh, we are so excited for you. Thank so happy you. for you. Congratulations. I'm, I'm so pleased that you've had me on and I'm able to, you know, talk about it and, and promote it. And I hope you read it and I hope you like it. Oh, it's you. It's you. It's you between pages. Oh, it's thank you, absolutely darling. fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great. It is called Acting Up, Me, Myself and Irene, which is a terrific title. Yes. And... Uh, and Your idea. Well, yes, it was my idea, but it is actually uh, me, myself, and Irene is a um, Jim Carrey. Yes, that's, movie. that's why I love that. And I suddenly went, I wonder if it's cop copywritten. And it's not. Um, right. But I wanted to call it Acting the Goat, but of course, goat now means greatest of all time. And I thought, geez, people are going to, she's a bit up herself. <laughs> but because in my day, Acting the Goat was acting up, acting doing up. the deal, you know. And the other title, Fifty Shades of Lynn, didn't get past No, the no, I decided. <laughs> so good to see you. Uh, the book is out tomorrow. Well done, Leah. Good stuff. Thank you.